Okay, welcome to part three of this video in which we're doing a uh, analysis of the doggy door. At the end of part two, we had a moment of uh, unclarity, and I started to uh, mess stuff up. I apologize. This indeed is correct. Um, I was under the impression that this 10 foot-pounds might represent a force, but it doesn't anymore. It represents a moment. So this is indeed correct. Okay, so we were at the point where we were looking at the moments in the y direction, and we had taken this guy, put it down here, plus we have m a y j hat, so we have m a y is equal to zero. And now we can do the moments in the z direction. So here we have minus 10 foot pounds. and then plus t times 1.25 feet, that's equal to zero. Okay, so there you go. We've got three equations, and it turns out in this uh, set of three equations, we only have three unknowns. Now, overall, we have six unknowns, but in the set of equations, only three of them showed up, which is kind of handy because it means we can now solve this set of three equations for the things we don't know. In particular, we have here an equation that only the only unknown is t. So we can basically solve this by taking the 10 to the other side of the equation, dividing by 1.25. And this tells us that t is equal to 8 pounds. OK, that's um, useful. We now know what the tension in the cable that holds up the doggy door is. Okay, and now that we know what t is, we can plug t in here and have um, 8 pounds times 0 0.313 feet plus max is equal to 0. So we can solve this for max, and when we do that, we get max is equal to minus 2.5 foot-pounds. And similarly, uh, we can plug T in here. So we'll have 8 pounds times 1.485 feet plus MAY is equal to 0, which gives us then that MAY is equal to minus 11.8 foot-pounds. Okay, so basically what we have at this point already by just looking at moments is we know the tension on our cable which is 8 pounds. We also know that the um, couples that are applied by the, by the uh, hinge are given, the x component of that couple is given by uh, minus point to 5 foot-pounds, and the y component is given by minus 11.88 foot-pounds. Again, there's no z component because the hinge is designed to allow um, the door to rotate about the z-axis. So now, the last thing we need to do is uh, plug everything we know about, well, actually, uh, plug everything we need to, or everything we've already computed into the sum of the forces is equal to zero and solve for the components of the reaction forces at the hinge, and we're done. So let's bring up a clean sheet. Okay, we have the summation of the forces as are equal to zero. Well, the forces that we have, uh, we have uh, T times lambda hat BC. Okay, this is, a, again, the the force that's exerted by the cable. We then had minus 10 pounds J hat, this is the weight, plus the reaction force at A in the X direction, plus the reaction force at A in the Y direction, plus the reaction force at um, A in the Z direction. And all of this is equal to zero. 
Okay, so this guy here, uh, from the values that we've computed for t and for lambda hat, um, if we take t again, which is 8 pounds, and multiply it by each of the values, uh, each of the components in lambda hat, we get then that this, here we'll represent this in green, we get that this product here is minus 3.75 pounds i hat plus 5 pounds j hat minus 5 pounds k hat. Okay, and again, this is 8 pounds times each of the components of this uh, unit vector. Okay, we still have the weight, so we have minus 10 pounds j hat, and we still have each of these unknowns, so I'll write them down without talking about it. And all of this is equal to zero. So now we look at the i hats, and uh, we find, uh, so here's a term with i hat, Here's another term with i hat, so we have minus 3.75 pounds plus f a x is equal to zero, from which it's clear that f a x is equal to 3.75 pounds. Okay, that's good. We're we're making progress. Uh, we have, in terms of the j hats, we have five pounds minus 10 pounds and f a y. So we'll have 5 pounds minus 10 pounds plus f a y is equal to 0. And from this, we can see that f a y is equal to 5 pounds. And finally, here we'll wrap up here in a really shockingly pink color, we have minus five pounds plus this guy f a z is equal to zero which says then that f a z is equal to five pounds okay well that was pretty fun actually depends on how you define fun uh, I remember as a student really not liking this stuff because you have all of this computation you need to do and uh, I tend to make enough mistakes that I'd have to do it three or four times to make sure I had it right and even with Wolfram Alpha doing most of the hard computations I still find this to be an awful lot of math and some of it seems kind of tedious but in any case we've uh, prevailed let's go see if our results make sense Okay, we had FAX, um, the force, let's see, we had FAX is 3.75 pounds in this direction, which makes sense because we have our cable pulling uh, back, it's going back and up in this direction. So, uh, yeah, this FAX is opposing the pull of the cable uh, backwards. Okay, so that's keeping, the FAX is keeping the doggy door from just pushing through the wall of the, or through the door. Uh, FX, or FAY, uh, this guy, we decided that that was five pounds. And uh, what this says is that the hinge is applying five pounds. It turns out that the cable is applying five pounds in the y direction which exactly balances out the weight of the door, the 10 pounds there. So that makes sense. And FAZ we found to be 5 pounds, so this guy is 5 pounds. Again, that's balancing out the fact that the tension in the cable is uh, pulling off in the negative Z direction, in that direction. Um, so the forces make sense. The moments that the, uh, that the hinge creates are a little harder to see, but they do make sense. Basically, we have um, the uh, 
uh, the cable pulling, um, trying to pull the door so it rotates this way. And so uh, we've got a moment uh, uh, in the, um, let's see, we've got a moment in the y direction that's rotating it back this way, or trying, or opposing this, uh, need to move it this way. And um, we also have a moment uh, in the x direction trying to rotate it up like this. And we've got a moment um, that, or an x component of the moment that opposes that. So basically that completes this analysis. Hopefully you found this useful. Um, you've seen now that three dimensions can just take a lot of computation. Uh, if you use vectors and keep everything straight, it usually works out. So hopefully this has been helpful, and thanks for watching.